I'm John Perkins. I'm a U.S. citizen, born in the United States, raised in the United States. I'm a former economic hitman. We work very much like some of the hitmen for the Mafia because we're looking for a favor later. And Mafia people have done this and gangsters have done this for, for ages. We just do it on a very large level with governments, with countries, huge level. And we're much more professional. We do this in many ways, but perhaps the most common is that economic hitmen will identify a country that has resources our corporations covet, like oil. And then we arrange a huge loan to that country from the World Bank or one of its sister organizations. But the money never actually goes to the country. Instead, it goes to our own corporations to build big infrastructure projects in that country. Things that benefit a few very rich people in that country, as well as our own corporations, but don't help the majority of the people who are too poor. But these people, the poor people, are left holding a huge debt, and it's so huge that they can't possibly repay it. But in the process of trying to repay it, they create a situation where they can't afford to have good health programs or educational programs. So we economic hitmen go back in and we say, listen, you owe us a lot of money. You can't pay your debts. So give us a pound of flesh. Sell your oil real cheap to our oil companies or vote with us on the next critical United Nations vote or send troops in support of ours to someplace in the world like Iraq. And in that way, we've really managed to create this empire. Because the fact of the matter is, we write the laws. We control the World Bank. We control the IMF. We even control the United Nations to a large degree. And so we write the laws. So the things economic hitmen are not illegal. Putting countries in huge debt and then demanding favors in return. That's not illegal. It should be. It isn't. Well, one of the characteristics of an empire is that it enforces its currency on the rest of the world. And we've really done that with the dollar. So in 1971, uh, the United States had a tremendous amount of debt, and a lot of this was the result of the Vietnam War. And we were on the gold standard. So some of these other countries decided to call in their debts in gold because they didn't trust the dollar. Nixon refused to pay in gold, in fact, took us off the gold standard because he knew he couldn't pay in gold. We didn't have the value. And so very quickly after that, we went on the oil standard. And I was a large part of that deal that we struck with Saudi Arabia, insisting that OPEC only sell oil in dollars. And so suddenly the dollar moves from the gold standard to the oil standard, which in many respects is a much more important standard because oil is intrinsically more valuable than gold in this day and age. And so suddenly uh, the world can only buy oil for dollars, and the dollar is a very, very important currency. Today, the United States, once again, is a bankrupt uh, country. We have huge amounts of debt, more debt than any country's ever had in the history of the world before. A and if some other country to call that debt in, in a currency other than the dollar, we'd be in very, very serious trouble. Right now, they're only calling it in in dollars because oil is the big commodity and you can only buy oil in dollars. But Saddam Hussein threatened to, to, to sell oil for something other than dollars just before he was taken down. Sometimes we economic hitmen fail to corrupt leaders of other countries, as I failed with Omar Torrijos in Panama and Jaime Roldos in Ecuador. It doesn't often happen, but when it does, then the jackals are sent in. And these are people who overthrow governments or assassinate their leaders. So when I failed with Jaime Roldos in Ecuador and Omar Torrijos in Panama, the jackals went in and assassinated them. On the few occasions where neither the economic hitmen nor the jackals are successful, then and only then do we send in the military. And this is, is exactly what happened in, in Iraq. The economic hitmen could not corrupt Saddam Hussein, could not bring him around. The jackals couldn't take him out. And so the military was sent in. 
the first time we sent the military in in, in 1991, uh, we destroyed his military and figured that he had been sufficiently chastised that now he would come around. And so during the 90s, the economic hitmen went back in to try to bring Saddam Hussein around, but he wouldn't give in. If he had, he'd still be running the country and we'd be selling him jets and tanks and everything else he wanted. But he didn't give in. The jackals couldn't assassinate him. His security forces were very good and he had a lot of look-alike doubles, so his own security men didn't know whether they were guarding him or a double. So neither the economic hitmen nor the jackals succeeded the second time with Saddam Hussein and at that point we sent in the military again and this time we took him out and the rest is history.